We had the Encyclopedia Britannica at home. And uh, even when I was a small boy, he used to sit me on his lap and read to me from the Encyclopedia Britannica. And we would read, say, about dinosaurs. And maybe it would be talking about the Brontosaurus or something. And he would, he would say something like, or the Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know, and it would say something like, uh, this thing is 25 feet high, and the head is six feet across, you see, and so on. And he'd, so he'd stop always and say, let's see what that means. That would mean that if he st stood in our front yard, he would be high enough to put his head through the window. But not quite, because the head is all a little bit too wide. It would break the window as it came by. Everything we'd read would be translated as best we could into some reality. So that I learned to do that, that everything I read, I tried to figure out what it really means, what it's really saying uh, by translating. And uh, so I used to get read the encyclopedia when I was a boy, but with translation, you see. So it was very exciting and interesting to think that there was animals of such magnitude. And I wasn't frightened that there would be one coming in my window as a consequence of this, I don't think. But I thought it was very, very interesting and that they all died out. And at that time, nobody knew why. We used to go to the Catskill Mountains. We lived in New York, and, and the Catskill Mountains is a place where people went in the summer. And uh, the fathers, there was a big group of people there, but the fathers would all go back to New York to work during the week and only come back over on the weekends. And on the weekends when my father came, he would take me for walks in the woods and would tell me various things about interesting things that were going on in the woods, which I'll explain in a minute. But uh, the other mothers seeing this, <laughs> of course, uh, thought that was wonderful and that their other fathers should take their sons for a walk. So they tried to work on them, but they didn't get anywhere uh, at first. And they wanted my father to take all the kids, but he didn't want to because he had a special relationship to me. We were a personal thing together. So it ended up that the other fathers had to take their children for walks the next weekend. And the next Monday, when they were all back to work, we were, all the kids were playing in a field, and uh, one kid said to me, uh, see that bird? What kind of a bird is that? And I said, uh, I haven't the slightest idea what kind of a bird it is. He says, it's a brown-throated th thrush or something. He says, your father doesn't tell you anything. But it was the opposite. My father had taught me, looking at a bird, he says, do you know what that is, bird is? It's a brown-throated thrush. But in Portuguese, it's a hontarapero. In Italian, a chutera piquita. He says in Chinese, it's a chung mong tong. In Japanese, a patara tokodacha, etc. He says, now they've know all the languages you want to know what the name of that bird is. And when you're finished with all that, he says, you'll know absolutely nothing whatever about the bird. You only know about humans in different places and what they call the bird. Now, he says, let's look at the bird and what it's doing. He had taught me to notice things. And one day when I was playing with what we call an express wagon, which is a little wagon which has a railing around it for children to play with that they can pull around. It had a ball in it. I remember this, it had a ball in it. And I pulled the wagon and I noticed something about the way the ball moved. So I went to my father and I said, say, Pop, I noticed something. When I pull the wagon, the ball rolls to the back of the wagon. It rushes to the back of the wagon. And when I'm pulling along and I suddenly stop, the ball rolls to the front of the wagon. I said, why is that? And he said, that, he says, nobody knows. He said, the general principle is that things that are moving try to keep on moving. And things that are standing still tend to stand still unless you push on them hard. And he says, this tendency is called inertia, but nobody knows why it's true. Now, that's a deep understanding. He doesn't give me a name. He knew the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something, which I learned very, very early. He went on to say, if you look close, you'll find the ball does not rush to the back of the wagon, but it's the back of the wagon that you're pulling against the ball, that the ball stands still, or as a matter of fact, from the friction starts to move forward, really, and doesn't move back. So I ran back to the little wagon, and set the ball up again and pulled the wagon from under it and looking sideways and seeing indeed he was right, the ball never moved backwards in the wagon when I pulled the wagon forward. It moved backward relative to the wagon, but relative to the sidewalk, 
it was moved forward a little bit. It's just the wagon caught up with it. So that's the way I was educated by my father, with those kind of uh, examples and discussions. With no pressure, just lovely, interesting discussions. Uh,